Yeah. That's from Il Trovatore, isn't it? Was that the opera? Oh, no. Well, no. The Night at the Opera. What was the opera in Night at the Opera? The Night at the Opera was El Trovatore. El Trovatore, yeah. And he's a, supposed to be a musician, isn't he? And a, yeah. a keen student of music. Oh, Groucho, the straddle lounger low back, twice the chair you think it is, sensational in style and comfort. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd want to know that before going on. You got Reagan on tomorrow night, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I know a fellow. What? I know a fellow used to take his wife home. I didn't hear you. I know a fellow that used to go steady with his wife before she married Reagan. Oh, I'm glad you added that. Uh, Norman yeah. Krasner was his name. Oh, Norman Krasner. Yes, yes. A yeah. playwright, writer. Uh -huh. But I had Mary Churchill <laughs> was my companion oh. at a dinner table at, in the embassy in London. Right. And after they brought the booze in, they brought in cigars because they know that I'm a cigar smoker. And Mary said to me, get me a cigar too, will you? These were these big Churchill cigars. Yeah. Cost about $8 a piece. And I says, I didn't know you smoked. She says, I do smoke. And I've always smoked, and we, I have a game that I play with my daddy. That's Winston. As you probably well know. <laughs> and I... I took two cigars, and I gave her one, and I took the other one. And now, what is the game that you played with your father? She said, we would each light a cigar, and we would bet one pound that he could, he always bet that he could hold the ashes longer on the cigar than I could. And I always beat him, she said. And it drove him crazy. Now, here's a man who was the biggest man in the whole world. Right. And he couldn't win five dollars from his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little footnote to history that I didn't yeah, know yes about. Yes, it is. Yeah. I can tell you another one, too. He was watching a night at the opera one night at his home oh. in, uh, yeah. you know, what the... Oh, uh, what was his home called? Ten, ten Downing Street. No, ten, but the one in the country, yes. probably. Oh, Ten Downing no, no, Street? No, no, this was yeah. Ten Downing Street. And Hess had just arrived in Scotland, and they had captured him oh, yeah. because he had come there because Hitler had asked Hess to go and visit Churchill and see if the war could be stopped. And yeah. he was watching A Night at the Opera. And somebody knocked on the door, and he came to the door and he says, what is it? We have just captured Hess in Scotland. Mm -hmm. He says, look, wait till his picture's over with her and call me back. He was the head of the... Apparently he was government. very cool that way. He could go to sleep without any trouble during the height of the well, what war. What do you think I'm doing now? State? No, <laughs> along with his audience. No, it's true about Churchill. Yeah. Churchill was very calm and could divorce himself from the war. It's amazing. Yeah. But you've played Man of History many times. We have a photograph of you that may surprise you. Uh, yeah. is, do you have that ready? Get, throw that up on the screen. And that's you as, as Napoleon, or else it's Napoleon. No, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's from uh, that's from that's, that's your stage costume from. Probably. I played Napoleon in the Walnut Street Theater in Philadelphia. Yeah. And I had always wanted to have an automobile. This had nothing to do with being Napoleon. No. I had had a number of third-rate automobiles. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a new car. And now that I was doing Alsace years, I had enough money to buy a Studebaker. Studebaker. And, uh, the salesman who sold it to me, he was French, and he pronounced it Sue the Becker. And I thought this is a pretty classy car. Sue the It was made in Indiana or something. It had nothing to do with France at all. At any rate, I bought a new car. I was now in the money. And I paid $1,000 for the Sue the Now, I was doing the scene of Napoleon, which would be the next scene after intermission. And the fellow drives up with a new car, which I'd never had. And he says, why don't you take a ride in the car? I said, I can't, because I have to do the Napoleon scene in mm -hmm. five minutes. It was right after intermission. He said, take a ride, just a little ride. Go around the block once. And I was so eager to have a new car. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Philadelphia. I imagine there are some people out front that are familiar with it, because the streets are very narrow, because it's a colonial city. It's where the Liberty Bell is. and a number of other things. The streets are very narrow, and there were streetcars in those days. 
And on each side of the streetcar, there would be enough room for one automobile. So I got in the car, dressed as Napoleon. <laughs> I had on boots and no socks, because the boots were so heavy, I couldn't get them on. So anyway, I got in the car, and I started to drive on the street. And I look ahead, and I see streetcars. There must have been 300 streetcars lined up. <laughs> Some car in front, the streetcar had broken down. Now I look them back at me, and I know I have to go on the stage in a few minutes, mm -hmm. and I see 800 cars or something on this side. Yeah. And there's no room to get over on this street. <laughs> now I'm sitting in the car, the engine is running, dressed as Napoleon, <laughs> and I turn the ignition off, and I get out and I start running. <laughs> running to the Walnut Street Theater where I was to appear in three minutes as Napoleon and as I'm running a cop sees me and he starts chasing me and I one, one boot flew off and I'm now running on my bare feet and one <laughs> well there's nothing more to it except two days later they gave me the car back the police had taken the car yeah. taken it down to some place where they take Stood at backyards. <laughs> it's, it's not much of a story, but it's a true story. And somewhere there's a man who sobered up when he saw a policeman chasing Napoleon down the streets of Philadelphia. <laughs> Disguised as Groucho Marx. At, uh, that same day, the following day, Harding had just died. And at the finish of president the Napoleon Harding? scene, he, the president, yes. Yeah. He was a crook anyhow. You know. <laughs> you know that. He was mixed up in the oil scandal. Teapot Dome. Teapot oh, yeah, Dome, yeah. Right. Thanks for the information. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Harding had died. Harding had died, and they asked me if I would <clears throat> make a speech. Well, I've never spoken about a president or anything serious. <clears throat> and the Walnut Street Theater was 100 years old, and it has a tin roof. Yeah. And it was raining. And I'm out there dressed as Napoleon, <laughs> talking about President Harding. Oh. And the deep teapot dome. I wish there were a transcript of it somewhere. Did anybody did anybody write it down or take notes on it? No, I don't know, but I, I got a lot of laughs uh, <laughs> talking about Harding because the whole audience oh. was crying. All the women in the audience were crying and the, yeah. and the rain coming from the roof. It was a very weird, weird speech. And I didn't know what I was taking and I didn't know him except that I just liked him. Mm. You what disliked him, or you disliked him? Oh, you disliked him, and you had to give a speech saying that, that, he, him. that he was wonderful. Yes, yeah. I can't believe that would have been was. something. Yeah. And he was robbing the United States government of their oil. <laughs> oh, he doesn't truth. have any relatives living this if he could. Uh, we'll be. We'll <laughs> know <laughs> sometime tomorrow. I have a feeling. Um, <laughs> let, uh, gee, there's some one story you told once that I, someone said for me to get you to tell again. It had to do with the skin of a gorilla. Um, I, we have to take a message, though, right now. Think about whether you want to tell it or not. Everyone should have a tape recorder. And here's a word from the people who have a tape recorder for everyone. Sony Superscope.